My name is Richard Curtis and I work for Adobe in the UK. I'm a digital imaging consultant, so I look after Photoshop, Lightroom, Elements, Creative Cloud and the workflows around it. Today in this session we're going to talk about Photoshop for Creative Cloud and this great new release. Okay, so let's have a look at shake reduction in this version of Photoshop for Creative Cloud. So we launched Photoshop and I'm going to take a stock image file first of all, this file here. You can see there it's pretty much out of focus. In fact, if you look at it, the actual image itself is sharp. But what happened is, when the picture was taken, the camera moved. It can cause blurriness of the image. But once we re-emphasize that the picture was sharp, and the picture does really need to be sharp for this filter to really work at its maximum performance. Under the filter menu, we go to sharpen. because This actually is a sharpen filter. And we go to shake reduction. The shake reduction dialog box will appear. Photoshop will automatically look around the picture and try and find an area to focus on. It will then analyze that area of the photograph and then work the algorithms to try and find the movement between the sharp image and the blur image. And as you can see there in this example, it's done a pretty good job of that. So let's look at some other photographs. So let's take this picture here. I shot this picture in Bhutan, and if I open this image and zoom into the image, you can see that it's sharp, but it could be a bit sharper. So let's have a go and see how the shake reduction manages this image here. So filter, sharpen, shake reduction. And you can see that Photoshop will actually automatically try and find the delta between the sharp bit and the blur bit. But you can see there it does a pretty good job at actually finding the sharpness for me. I can see, if I look in the little dialog box here, the actual pattern that it's trying to find the delta for, and that's what it's trying to compensate for when it corrects. But you can see there, especially in the hair, it's done a pretty good job of resharpening that. The automatic settings that Photoshop's using may be a little bit too sharp or extreme in this case, so I can change that. I can dial down the blur trace boundary, and this changes the way the algorithms work. So let's cancel that, close this image down, and let's pick another image. So here's a picture of one of our colleagues, uh, Amuni, who runs uh, Premiere Pro. So let's run the shake reduction filter. So sharpen, shake reduction, and let's see how it gets on with this image. Immediately, I want to move the actual analyzing point and place it over Al. Once it's finished, I'm going to zoom in so you can see the effect. If I keep zooming in, you can see Al is much sharper. But let's have a look at a preview so you can see before. And you can see there that Al is quite unsharp. If I click the preview button now, you see Al becomes much sharper. If I look here at this little black box, you can see the delta of movement between the sharp and the blur edges. Let's take this image here. Could I open this image up? So let me zoom in in camera and you can see there around her teeth it's quite blurry. So I'm going to open the image. Now I'm going to open this image as a smart object. So I press the shift key or I can click on the hyperlink and choose open in Photoshop as smart objects. But the benefit is that because I'm using smart filters I'm going to be able to use masking. So let's go into the filter, sharpen, shake reduction, Photoshop's going to analyze the area for me. I'm just going to change the area of analyzing just around her mouth. And you can see there it pulls the image back into focus. I can also put areas of interest over here as well, the flag, and see what happens there. So I can do multiple points, and multiple points really allows me to correct the tracking. Because if you think about it, a camera may move side to side, or it may move one edge out, and another edge moves up and down. So different focus points to actually pull that together. If I zoom in here, you can see that some areas around the top of her, her jumper that she's wearing may not want to be part of the shake reduction. So what I can do is just use masking to mask that off once I bring it back into Photoshop. So let's press OK and commit to this change. You can see it's applying the shake reduction with two blur traces now. A mask has been applied for the smart filter. and you, the shake reduction has been applied as a filter underneath it. That means it's a non-destructive edit. I'm just going to zoom in so you can see the effect. 
I can also double click on the shape reduction and you can see that the two points of interest are still there on the screen. Now what I may want to do is mask off her jumper. So I can click on the smart filter and turn my brush on using the B key or just pick up the brush. I want to reset the foreground and background palettes, so I press the D key. And actually, because the mask is white, so white will reveal and black will conceal, I want to push the X again to switch the foreground and background colors, which means I now paint with black. Now I want to change the size of my brush, it's a bit too small. So I'm just gonna use a Centique and use a shortcut key. I've already programmed this bottom button here on the left to, to push the Control Alt for me, which I'd normally use on the keyboard to change the size of the brush. You can see what's happening now as I move the stylus from the screen on this Centic 22 HD Touch. You can see I'm changing the hardness and the size of the brush just by using the key on the actual Centic. So I get to the point where I want that to be, somewhere about there. I want the hardness to be pretty, pretty hard, about 67%. And now I'm just gonna paint out. And you can see as I'm painting, the gray is appearing. So I have to work quite hard to make sure that's all. Let's just change that very quickly again. Let's just change the hardness. You can see as I'm painting, the effects are painting out. I'm left with a very nice sharpness. So that was camera shape reduction. So I hope you enjoyed that and uh, see you next time. Thank you very much.